have a look. I've borrowed, I've borrowed one of the functions we used over there, but I'm doing something completely different here. Um, this time, and this is the second kind of situation, or maybe third, lost count, where you've got multiple curves, you need to divide things up, okay? I need to consider two integrals. The area I'm after is the one between the two curves. This is the area I'm interested in, okay? Now, in order to work out this area, there are two integrals in my head that I can use to calculate this, right? Firstly, if I integrate over this interval, by the way, I don't know what the interval is yet, but we'll find out shortly. If I integrate over this interval, and this is my integrand, okay? What area will I get? I won't get this area, will I? I'll get a, well, I'm gonna get all these straight edges. If, I, if I'm here and oh, here, no. right? You can see, oh, I've got the right color. You can see I'm going to get a trapezium. Do you see that? Yeah. Um, so trapeziums, trapezia, they actually come up a lot when you're integrating, because every time you integrate a straight line that doesn't have, it's not horizontal, you get a trapezium, which was important for us later. Now, if I integrate this from there to there, I'll get that whole trapezium. I don't want the whole trapezium. So what do I need to subtract? The area above the curve. Okay, now in order to get the green one, right, what I've got to do is take the trapezium and subtract these bits here. See that? If I take the trapezium and subtract the blue area, then I'm going to get the green area. Okay, so that's just an argument by subtraction. Now, the area that I've just shaded in blue, what is that area? It's the area beneath the parabola. Do you see that? So in the same boundaries, again from A to B, to get the blue area, I just need to integrate this guy, okay? From whatever that is to whatever that is, okay? Now, think about that. Think about what we just said, right? The area I want, the area is the integral of this one, right? The integral from, I'm just going to call A and B for now because I don't know what those numbers are. <coughs> A to B of X, right? That'll give me the trapezium. And then I need to subtract the other area, right? Which is, again, from A to B, of, what is it? X minus 2 squared dx. Okay, now I'm going to pause there for a moment. This is two integrals. It's two integrals, okay? I can do these two integrals. I can do them separately. There's no problem with that. I'll get the right answer, as we just argued, okay? But there's a quicker way to do this, right? Do you recall, I'll just use, I'll use this. This is a bit easy to roll up. Do you recall when we were talking about the properties of definite integrals? We talked about ways to divide up integrals, right? Like you could have an integral that was made up of different parts and you could separate them out. Here was an example, right? I told you, and you've got this in your book so you don't need to rewrite it. You've got this. Here's one integral and I can slice it up. I can say take that integrand and that integrand and just treat them separately, right? Here's one. <coughs> and, whoops. Here is the other, okay? Now, even though it's not immediately obvious because there's actually something sort of stopping you, right? Do you see there's a distinct similarity between this property of definite integrals and what I wrote over there? Like this is just a special version of this line. Do you see it, right? Addition and subtraction, really the same kind of operation, just in reverse, right? So for instance, if I change this sum of integrals, to a difference between two integrals, then that'll change this guy up here also to a difference. Do you agree with that? So the difference between two integrals is the integral of the difference, right? Which is exactly the same as differentiating, right? If you differentiate one thing, take away another, right? You might as well differentiate each of them separately and that means you can go backwards and forwards between those okay so therefore up here right rather than deal with them as two separate things i'm going to evaluate one integral right there's this guy up the front right now why is he up the front why haven't i got them switched around you need yeah, higher. yeah very good so i'm actually going to say before i say that like actually the reason why is because this trapezium is the bigger area Right? And I'm subtracting a smaller area. But another way of geometrically saying it is that the reason why it's bigger is because that x line, everywhere in this interval, the straight line is above the parabola. Do 
Do you see that? So that's why it ends up being a bigger area. So I'll go x take away and the parabola's beneath it. Right? So I'll go x minus 2 or square. Okay. Now the reason why this is advantageous to us is because when I expand x minus 2 or squared, I'm going to get some like terms. So these guys will simplify with each other and then I will have to integrate less things in summary, in total. Okay. So just before we leave that, what I've got is this guy here, <coughs> which is also this guy here, that's the top function. And then, because we use blue for that area underneath, the second integral, the one you're subtracting, is the bottom function, right? Now, what would happen, just out of curiosity, what would happen if I switched them around by accident? Like, what if I accidentally got the order incorrect? I, all will happen is a change in sign. I'll get a negative area, okay? So that's a signal to me that I've done something wrong. Now, you shouldn't just ooh, accidentally get a negative and then just slap a minus sign in front, front, out the front. You should go back and you should make sure you get the order right. Because which one's above and which one's below? kind of matters, right? It's like, which are you subtracting from which? Okay, so the last thing I need before I can actually do this definite integral is I need some boundaries. So can we find the boundaries? What do I do? X squared. Oh, X equals X. Yeah, I need to find these points of intersection, don't I? And this is commonly the first step, right? I need to know where they intersect. I just need the X values because that'll give me a lower and an upper bound. Okay, so let's quickly solve that x equals x minus 2 all squared. This is to find the points of intersection. I already know what this is. So I'm going to solve for x squared minus 5x plus 4 equals 0. What's the factorization? Negative 4, negative 1. Good. Nice easy numbers for you. 1 and 4. Okay. So there's my a and there's my b. Now I'm ready to evaluate this integral. Okay. So this is nice because having dealt with two, I can combine them into one. So I can just say area. I don't need to say A1 or A2 anymore. <coughs> the area is from one to four. I'm going to put in my top integrand first, my top function. And then I'm going to subtract my bottom function. So I might as well expand this now because I'm going to have to collect some like terms in a second. OK, like so. And I'm going from one to four of, OK. What do we get here? Minus x squared. x plus 4x. So this is plus 5x. You okay with that? And then I've got minus 4. Hang on. Yeah. Does it look okay? Look happy? Okay. Um, this, I, can we factorize this? x squared minus 5x plus 4. This is this actually. Okay. I could factorize this. But there's no point in factorizing it, right? Because then I've got a product that's hard to integrate. I don't want to do that. Expanding is the easiest form, so I might as well just leave it like that. And then I just think of all the primitives for each one. So this is going to be x cubed on 3, minus x cubed on 3. Tell me the next one. 5x squared on 2, and you just <coughs> slap an x on that guy. You evaluated him from 1 to 4. Okay. Alright, let's do the top and the bottom. Really? Four and a half sounds like what I got before. 